So here's our old fire pit. We're gonna fix this thing up. This thing's about to expire. Built it a couple of years ago. It's just getting old and crusty. We're gonna make it better. So we pounded a nail in there so you can hook your measuring tape on it. Now you can pull a radius. We'll hold our tape at 22 inches and mark it around the circle. Okay, so the way you do this is you get the you got the one that was a 20 inch radius, so you have to times it by two, so it's going to be 40, so 40 inch circle. You go up to the circle and you push that, push it again, push it again. That's the circumference, so that's 125 inches, and then you go plus 18 inches for your overlap. So that's how long your piece of rebar needs to be for your inside piece. 143. 11 sixteenths to be exact so I just go 144 inches okay your next one was 26 inches 26 inches times it by two for your diameter 52 inches and then you do circle circle your circumference is 163 inches plus 18 inches overlap 18 inches it's 181 and 3 eighths that's the length of your, the rebar that you need to cut about 44 inches we can squeeze it down
Okay, so we got our two rings of rebar. Here's the block we're using. We're gonna stand them on their ends and stab them in the concrete. So we're gonna have a piece of rebar with a four inch bend. You don't want the rebar to stick out of the top of the block when we're done. So you bend it at four inches, stab it in. It's gonna be about a six inch thick footing. So we'd hold it at eight. It's about three inches in-ish. So our rebar would be need to be about 23 inches long. I'm going to make it 24 inches. Piece of rebar in there. I'm going to cut it off. Okay, so all these blocks I have to cut a bond beam in them so that uh, I can stab my uprights in them and also grout them because I want to grout them solid. So I got to cut that a little deeper. This bond right here isn't deep enough for my verticals to come up and grab some concrete. So I'm going to cut these deeper. See this? Don't ever use your stiletto hammer for this. So we're using Sacrete High Strength Concrete Mix.
Okay, these things don't have to be perfect because we're going to cover both sides of it up. So we just stabbed them in the concrete. They need to be level. When we poured the footing, we purposely left the middle dirt so that when it rains, it doesn't fill up with water or snows, it doesn't fill up with water. That's the reason for digging, the, digging it around instead of just pouring one big old solid piece of concrete because it, it'll just fill up the water and make your soot run out and saturate into your block and everything. So this lets it drain out the bottom. All you concrete guys out there, these two before they're nice. You gotta try them out. Those floats are so overrated. You just have no idea how nice a trigger for it is. Put some concrete bonding adhesive in it. Okay, so here's my nail that I put in there. That's what I measured off of to get all these right on so it's round. So you just have to measure each stone. You could cut a stick and just hold it. Okay, so our next step is to stone the exterior. Then we'll cut the bond beam in that and grout that solid. So this thing ain't going anywhere. Okay, so you'll notice pavers are higher than these blocks on one side. When I wet set these, I wasn't even worried about them being level. But I made sure that these pavers were level. So when I do the outside stone, it'll just come up as high as the pavers and then that'll just be poured full of concrete and be level on the top. Just made it so I could go fast on the, on the wet setting. So I didn't have to sit there and fuss with them. Okay, so we got a pile of junk rocks here thinking about just using them up for the around the fire pit okay so the way you calculate your material that is needed for the exterior of your fire pit so you can get the to get this square footage whatever thickness you're going to use if you're going to use a four inch thick stone or if you're using a two inch thick so you, you measure from from brick to brick and add two inches for this side and two inches for that side. So if you're gonna go two inches. So you'd add four inches to your diameter. So we have about 51 and a half. So it's pretty close all the way around. 51 and a half. So we're going to go, so you take your 51 and a half, and we're going to try to keep ours at about three inches. So go one, two, three inches, and then another three inches, one, two, three inches. So we're at 57 and a half is our circumference, or our diameter, I mean, 57 and a half. Okay, so we had 57 and a half inches, so it's 57.5, and we, we gotta get the circumference. So, 
we'll, we'll change this into feet. So we divide that by 12 inches. So that is 4.8 after you round it. So it's 4.8. So you go 4.8 feet times it by 3.14, which is pi, equals 15 feet. That's the circumference around it. And that's to the outside of your stone. So it's 15 feet. And then you times that by 16 inches, which is 1.333 feet. So he times it by 1.333. That's 20 square feet. So that's how many square feet of stone that you need for your perimeter. Okay, so we're gonna build our own bricks. We're gonna make it so that we have a four and a half inch by eight inch brick. We're gonna build it out of stone. So you scribe this at four and a half. Then you go four and five eighths for your blade width. You go four and three quarters. Four and seven eighths. We colored the mortar, put two cups of dye in it per bucket. Way to keep your color the same is go off the hinges right here. So you put your mortar up to this height. That way your dye stays the same every bucket. So if you need another bucket, you can just fill it up to there. Put the same amount of dye in it and your color will stay consistent. Now we got to cut a bond beam in this. Probably doesn't need any concrete in there, but we're going to do it anyway, so it's tough. Got it grouted up. 
ready for the cap. So this is the plywood we used for the, the table, the template that we cut out. And uh, we're just going to use this piece of scrap here for our other, for our template on our fire pit. So what I've done here is I've measured, measured from this side to the other side, four feet. So I went two feet to center, put a screw in it right there so that I can hook on there. I've got 31 inches for the outside diameter and 17 inches for the inside diameter for the cap on our fire pit. So I'll measure over 17 inches, do a radius, and then I'll go 31 inches and do a radius, mark it, and then we'll cut it out. And we'll use that piece of plywood to set on a piece of stone and mark it. So we take our template and just set it on top of a stone. Try to get the thicknesses all the same. So we're trying to stay about three inches thick approximately. So we can use, we can probably use that one if it's the right size. Barely can work. It could just cut it a little bit short. They don't all have to be exactly the same. Okay, so we gotta replace our blade, wore the Hummer out. The diamond cuts and the tail follows. So this is a die tech blade, so these diamonds are strategically placed. That's why they're in an exact formation. But you can see how the diamond cuts and the tail follows. So if you ever have a question, see, you, I'll go straight down to, to the arrow on the blade. Most blades have just an arrow that tell you which way they're turning. But if for some reason that doesn't ever, that isn't there, then you can look at these diamonds. The diamond will cut and the tail will follow right behind the cut. So this Ditec blade, Cuts about 10 times faster. They're really expensive, but they're worth it. It's embarrassing how much faster it cuts than the other kind. So I'll put a link in the description, let you see if you want to buy one. stone to leave so we cut these little straight lines in it and it gives a place for the stone to give when you're chiseling it and that's kind of a trick on getting the inside radius to look good and have that stone actually pop off Hey, 
can see my line there, I stayed back about a quarter of an inch so that when you chisel it, you, you won't see those lines that the saw made. So stay back a little bit and don't do that. about 265 approximately it's not as fat as I thought we got these stones spread around I'm gonna set them in place here's big Bertha So this has kind of a big old deep hole in it, and I'm gonna, so I'm gonna cut it off. It looks kind of weird. We're just gonna cut it right here. 